Heel Tapes here, back playing some more Planet Zoo, and we are in episode 13 of my Canadian zoo project, Tigwadu Zoo. Uh, so, as you will have seen from the thumbnail in this one, we are working on a Japanese macaque habitat uh, following on from the Arctic foxes that we did last two weeks ago, I think that was. Uh, yeah, a little bit of a break in the schedule this week. Uh, but yeah, we did some, we did a little bit of work on the stream, um, on the stream. So we have this, what working on here is adding a little bridge that goes into that stream that you see kind of running down the hill. Um, so the habitat itself, I think this is going to be a two-parter again, a bit like we did in the Arctic Fox habitat. I think there's going to be two sections of this habitat. Um, so we're working on this kind of outdoors area there ends up being an outdoors area and an indoors area but i think there's going to be a second indoors area um it's a little bit of a loose idea at the moment but i think we're i think that's what we're going to do um so adding in the combination of um this sort of faux backdrop um as with most of my things that i build in this game everything goes through sort of fairly iterative changes um, so at this stage, I think we're building with an elevated path for the guests and that ends up getting changed. Um, I, the whole point of this thing was that I decided I wanted to create like a big, almost like a big focal point, kind of big cage system uh, like you see for monkeys. Um, obviously, it would be really cool if the monkeys actually climbed on the cage in um, on the mesh, but we know that they don't. Um, I'd imagine that that would probably be something super, super difficult for the developers to do. Uh, but one of the things that I wanted is to keep it really kind of organic and not just have like a big square box, which is quite easy to do and not entirely unrealistic, I suppose. But for something like this, you know, it's quite an organic sort of shape, the space anyway. Um, and this is one of the kind of nice little creative, almost like little creative accidents that happens with Tigwido is because I've squeezed it all into this this scenario map i am sort of forced to make sure that i'm maximizing the amount of space that i'm using so these little organic shapes kind of need to fill them up um, and that's why it's starting to feel quite dense but i like that um so yeah i thought i'd add this kind of wave shape thing organic sort of wave shapes i what i did was build myself a little build set um, of those curves you see i've got kind of several different curves um, and then construct it from that kit. And so that will probably mean A, that I'll upload that kit as a, a thing for the workshop so you can build these yourselves, um, but also that I'll probably reuse this kind of, this approach again at, in different places, uh, maybe the same sort of size or maybe smaller. And then I came, I, where it was tricky was kind of coming to the corners um, and the edges. And I came across this idea of, Maybe if it would just look like it was kind of like a um, almost like a PVC kind of sheeting that filled the corners in these little places. So wherever I had sort of difficult sections is that's what I used. Um, adding the curbing in now. So as you can see, I've removed that elevated path and we're now on just a yeah a raised section of, of uh, I bought the terrain up effectively, mainly because not really any other reason than I just thought I thought it would be quite fun to actually have um, the monkeys eventually in the second part of this habitat go over the top of the guests um, my original thought was that they would go underneath the guests underneath the path um, and I would probably have stuck to that idea if it wasn't for the fact that the paths are just so thick um, and I thought yeah, you know, more fun more kind of interactive um, for the guests to see them kind of coming over the top of them in a tunnel or something so that will probably be what we're working on in part two of the habitat uh so yeah i did this i put all the cage together as you see and then i just kind of looked at it i was like you don't get that clear of view and you still got you still don't get super clear of view out through these um the glass pieces or they're supposed to be like that they're kind of plastic basically uh pvc kind of lightweight plastic thing uh but because you still get that kind of milky effect through the glass which is a bit of a shame but yeah, I felt like that was a bit more of an un a bit more of a unobstructed view, a bit more rock work, adding in some of these kind of like shedded layers. Um, I like doing that sometimes, as because uh, you see that kind of natural na those natural structures sometimes in rock, rather than having just kind of clean and, and uh, clear surfaces. Obviously, a bunch of foliage going in there. I've tended to try and squeeze the foliage around the rock sometimes. 
I think those crowberry and the um the cowberry and the and the bearberry is it? Maybe it's the cowberry and the crowberry uh, bushes work really well, kind of looking like they're sneaking out from inside the little cracks that might form in rocks and the you know little places where um, dirt might collect and things. Now working on the actual climbing structure, so I've got this um, this wicked tree in there, uh, Scott's pine in there, um, and we're sort of using that with this little kind of climbing frame. I think there'll probably be more to this climbing structure or further further additions as I go into part two, uh, but pretty happy with this as the first stage. One of the things I've always noticed about this about the climbing mechanics in Planet Zoo, and it's always a bit of a shame, but so something like a monkey like they don't spend it i always feel like they don't spend a high enough percentage of their time off the ground it always feels like they spend more of their time on the ground than they do up um, and so one of the things that i want to experiment with in um, part two of this habitat is that i tend to i tend to create climbing structures where you know there are lots of um lots of the beams lots of ropes and all those sorts of things and my feeling is that the reason why they don't spend as much time up up elevated on places they don't tend to hang out as often they tend to just use those ropes and those beams as a means to get to another destination so i think what i need to work on is actually trying to have some you know elevated elevated platforms that they might sit on maybe with some some bedding or something up there and maybe that will incentivize them to kind of just go up and chill um, up at up at kind of elevated view because they tend to at the moment they tend to spend as I say most of their time in that kind of valley floor. So we're kind of on one of the internal spaces now. So this is a little little kind of gate thing that goes through, uh, and you'll see me do more of that in a second. And as I said, there's always as ever the real time tour uh, where you'll see kind of more of the details. And this was a nice little idea that I kind of came across. Initially, I was thinking this is quite a bare wall um, because we're right opposite the, you see, kind of see it in the background. We're right opposite the, the Arctic fox habitat and the, the prairie dogs. And so what I thought was I'd like to I'd like to have something here, but not something that's too much of a major pull for guests. So I didn't really want a window or a large window into the main part of the habitat. So I thought I'd create this little implied exhibit box. I did it. I did it as an implied thing, just because it's so much smaller. And the, the challenge I was having with the the in the proper in game one was it's just too deep. It's just too tall. And um, this wall here, I think, is about two and a half meters, maybe just under, maybe just under three. So nothing really made sense and and fit in here. I think this worked all right. I didn't didn't do anything to to establish what was in there. Um, but the trick is to use that alongside a vista point. So if you add a vista point and you can hide that vista point somewhere, so it's actually just hidden in one of those those wooden uprights you see. And if you target something inside the implied exhibit box, then the then the guests will actually come and look at it, and they do. Um, the access for that, and I didn't really massively need to do this, but back of that exhibit box is obviously inside the monkey habitat. So didn't want the monkeys being able to get to that box. So here is a kind of a little caged off section. Just a little fun idea. Again, I'm not sure exactly how realistic this would be, but I just put a you know, I just thought I'd go a little bit further with it and put this little, you know, gate in. This little supposed to be that that's separated off the monkeys from uh the whatever's inside that exhibit and the in, in exhibit box so maybe it's you know snakes or spiders or something we shall see and then some in, more implied stuff going on in here little door there's kind of two levels to this so you've got this raised up section this section's raised up in order to mean that the monkeys are at kind of eye level for the guests same way that i've done the prairie dogs and the arctic foxes that the the uh yeah the, the the ground level inside the habitat is is raised up and i've tried to do that in a few places i've tried to mess around a few places with the the terrain shift between the position of the guests so as i said in in the previous habitats all of the terrain all of the habitat is actually higher um than the guests so that they you know that that, that the animals are kind of kind of running around at 
I don't know, kind of eye level with the with the guests inside their habitats. And this one, we're, we're kind of doing the same, but we've done eye level here and then the main part of the habitat inside the netting or inside the cage, we are actually looking down on the monkeys. So here's the kind of internal space. This is their sort of internal play space. So I just created some little... This is whenever I've seen these sorts of things at actual zoos, they always just look a bit like chaos. They just look like there's loads of stuff going on. They look kind of fun. There's things hanging down. There's ropes. There's various things they can climb on. Um, it's all just a bit of a you know crazy little space where the monkeys go in and wreck, wreck havoc. Basically, some of this stuff they don't actually use. Some of it I actually end up replacing um, with bamboo pieces and things. This was supposed to be, I've seen this a, a bunch of times. I've actually seen this in a um, a gorilla habitat, but these are supposed to be almost like straps hanging down. They're almost like the same sort of material that ratchet straps are made out of. That sort of, I think it's like nylon. And the monkeys just, you know, jump about on it, pull it, climb it, all that sort of thing. Um, so that was just what these are. And just to, it, obviously they don't use it and it's all faux and it's all just an implied thing but I thought it was kind of fun something that they um, added a little bit more detail so I bunged a load of bedding in in, in these sorts of spaces because you always see that um, and then last little bit here is just putting up some putting I've got some lighting in here the ceiling is obviously quite low monkeys are able to climb around so I wanted to make sure they can't actually get at those lights um sort of important sometimes to do that to remember those little things most of the time i don't worry too much about this sort of stuff but um it tends to just add a little bit of detail so last bit for the um for the speed build and then we'll be into the real-time tour so just a few more details again keeping the roof structure um consistent what we've done before so i will be back with you any minute guys stick around for the real-time tour We're starting the tour from the top of the steps this time, just to see the new view. Uh, so as you can see, they're peeking out over the top there. This this side is not, not done, that's all kind of temporary, and obviously this side has all got to change, and I'm not sure if that door's staying. So we're going to do a loop round this way, and we'll come back round here and go through that door at some point. But yeah, so there you can see the the net kind of sticking up over the top, which I think is kind of alright. It doesn't interfere with the the sign too much so if we make our way down this away so past the past the prairie dogs again past the foxes there just down the slope there so this is our first little view oh actually kind of fortunately there's a bunch of them in there so this is our first little view into the habitat so as I said, this is kind of their little backstage play area. And they just seem to be chilling today. <laughs> this guy's just like putting the box on top of his mate's head. And that's a really cool spot. Funny enough, the guests don't really seem to congregate here. You'd think that would be a really cool spot for them to to chill and look at the look at the monkeys, but they don't really. So yeah, change that a few of these bits, change those out for bamboo. To be honest, they don't play as much as I'd like in there. They tend to play with a the box. They occasionally play with a piano thing. But I'm quite happy with them just kind of hanging in there. Um, so there's my little... There's my little implied exhibit box. So yeah, as I said, it was really just the fact that I need to change out these signs as well. I think one of those will probably stay, but one of them will swap out for something else. Just the fact that there's this kind of big void there. And I didn't really want guests looking this direction because there's quite a lot going on on this side um i really wanted them to kind of focus their way down this path um and then obviously they've got the tundra sections going there but we're gonna go we're gonna go this away so widened out this path change this path a bunch actually i think they've still got some work to do uh, and obviously there's this this right hand side and whatever's going on back there to be done so there you see my little tube, my little run coming out. Uh, they will run up that and run along there. Uh, obviously at the moment they've got nowhere to go, so they don't go anywhere. But that will be in the next episode. Um, and as I said, this whole side of it at the moment is temporary. I think that gate, is, the habitat gate is probably going to move to the other side. 
So yeah, there they all are kind of just hanging out, doing their thing. As I said, they do play they do play a bit and they climb a bit. I think it will help when I have this as a a route for them to use. So that'll give them a reason to go all the way up that. As I said, I think they don't tend to use so I've put a few knots and things in that in that rope and unfortunately they don't, they don't really use it and I think because of the fact that they they won't pass over those knots. So let's go round. We'll make our way down and in. As I said, this is a temporary temporary entrance for the keepers to get in at the moment. So this this wall won't be here. Um, and then we can go down actually into the bottom of this section. They tend to spend most of their time just chilling out down here. They can use these these feeders. That one doesn't look like it needs uh, needs to be eaten at all. And then we'll head around. We'll head around. I think I'll do a bit more. I'd like to do a bit more kind of hanging down and a few more things. And as I said, I think maybe something, some a couple of places up the top where they can kind of chill out. I've also noticed in the last, just after I started recording, let's see if we can see one do it. I think this is partly the way that the mechanics work. Um, but they technically, they can get in and out as something as tight as that, as small as that, because of the fact that there's a climbing structure there. And this is, I did this way back when I did my tropical dome. I discovered this thing that, you know, the, the, the hitbox of an animal is much smaller when they're climbing. So, but yeah, there we go. One just did it there. When you've got two climbing structures together, sometimes it just kind of blends together. And you'll notice they just kind of, occasionally they'll just kind of, warp from here through into that tunnel so i've got to try and do something about that because it's a little bit annoying i'm pretty happy with the way the actual cage itself came out i think that's all pretty cool that tree works actually really well in here a few little places i probably need to tidy up so let's jump out of here we'll go round. we'll just push our way through this wall and we may well end up on the roof here but so this way push through this wall so this is implied access for keepers so they can come through here in theory um, and then this brings us into the back of one of their little night boxes yeah see they did it again there jump from that one straight through the wall into that <laughs> into that climbing structure so put a little skylight things for them in here quite like that they hang out in here let's just see if we can boot through this wall oh we very much are standing on the ceiling so yeah i think that came all came out all right let's push back out here for a second i think this is my favorite spot as i said part two coming up guys so hopefully that'll be not too long a wait for the second part oh <laughs> seems to love that box anyway thank you very much for watching don't forget to like and subscribe if you are already subscribed i very much appreciate you and I shall catch you guys on the next one. Take it easy.